Hello YouTube viewers, this is Heliok here. Today I welcome you to my channel S2T, Science to Technology. Here we're gonna take a look at applications of science where each weekday would be dedicated to one aspect of the subject matter like Monday would be dedicated to rockets, Tuesday would be dedicated to cameras as such and uh, so long. So every weekday we'll look into a different subject. So that is my channel, Science to Technology. Today is Monday. So we're going to look into Rocket Monday, episode one. Now in this episode, we're going to focus on three components. Why it is so popular in nowadays, what it is primary function, as in Rocket's primary function, and how it works in terms of basic designs. Now, why it is so popular in nowadays, it has to do with few things changing in the collective consciousness of humans. Basically, recently, due to Elon Musk and SpaceX, Virgin Galactic, Richard Branson, Blue Origin, Jeff Bezos, all these people have showed the world that rich people are no longer just focused on making money. They are more focused on making a name for themselves, a name that will last. So uh, this renewed interest into the sector of space from private individual changes everything. Earlier, before these individuals came into the spotlight, if you had asked anyone what is space, the most they could have answered is either NASA or the government or their own country's uh, national space agency. Like many countries have their own space agencies. India has ISRO, same way NASA is for America. So these private individuals, those who have invested their own money, they have very, very good marketing. Specifically, Elon Musk is known for its marketing skill. Like he has a tendency to, let's just say, put the cart before the horse, as they say, but he's a very good marketer. So lot of private wealth has gone into this sector. That's why it's so popular nowadays, specifically after successful launch of uh, well, I should say, I did not say launch, successful landing of Falcon 9 booster. That changed everything. There has been attempt before that to land propulsively, but we just didn't uh, find it to be economically viable to do so. And we'll discuss those aspects in the further episodes. For now, these three individuals and many more, it's not like they are the only one, and many more, these three primary individuals alongside with a lot of science communicator and a uh, few names come to the mind when we say science communicator like uh, our late and great Stephen Hawkins whose contribution to science and public interest in science cannot be understated. His books changed everything like um, having a book that's literally titled universe in a nutshell so i read that book it's quite interesting and uh, you do get to see why Elon, uh, stephen hawkins has such a unique sense of humor read that book and you'll find why i'm saying that and uh, one of my personal favorite is dr michio kaku whom i have to say i'm a big fan First, he has a very good demeanor, very calm, very collective demeanor. And uh, he made a TV show specifically dedicating science fiction from a uh, perspective of science, as in like how you can use science to achieve science fiction, which was mind blowing to be practical. And a scientist doing that gives credibility to the idea that things that are impossible today may be possible tomorrow. Now, that cannot be understated. And last but not least, and I'm pretty sure I have to give you guys no introduction to this guy, Neil deGrasse Tyson. Now, I really have nothing to say about this guy. Basically, he's awesome. Now, all things considered, we have to respect our scientists because they are the front line to human knowledge. Basically, they are looking into abyss and figuring things out. And then we are, you know, basically in basic tense, we are just uh, profiting from their effort, as in they do, uh, figure out the mathematics, how things work, some engineer make it into a reality, and then boom, we get the products of it. Now that is why. Now we should come to the second part, what? Now rockets have many uses, but uh, I would be remiss if I say it was peaceful purpose that created it. The first uh, 
practical not to say practical by today's standard but practical at the time it was created was v2 rocket so the first and uh, very serious use of rockets were well unfortunately was to destroy other people targeting system the first missiles were rockets as you were were liquid fueled and their primary function just to blow each other up so rockets don't have actually very peaceful origin let's just say that all things considered uh, that is still the biggest use of rockets so if you want to find out the most the most badass rocket ever built it would be icbms and uh, i i will go into detail in further episode about icbm but suffice to say if you think saturn 5 is expensive you would be surprised to know that it's basically a scaled up version of a icbm all rockets primarily are that now the only difference between icbm and rockets as we know is icbm has a ballistic trajectory and a orbital rocket goes around a planet instead of you know crashing into it makes sense so well weapon system is the primary use of rocket second uses is spying so first we figured out how to put satellites into orbit and all of you must be aware of the very very shiny ball in space known as sputnik which was just a radio transmitter now sputnik has a very very profound impact on the world because now to the common world it was shows it's just a radio transmitter it's going around orbit and it's just you know beeping hello travelers in russian of course now things changed because those people who knew the project they knew all it is is icbm which was upgraded modified to carry out this task now icbm is very easy to detect because of the launch plume however if you put some payload in a orbit you can't detect it like this could be in orbit for days or weeks or heck it could be so long it could be forgotten and then boom deorbit the whatever the payload or the warhead and now this aspect was understood by us government quite well and uh, suffice to say they shit themselves and nasa was like uh, very quickly created this like it was a quick fire response like we need something to figure this out because space was about to become the next warfare war theater as they will say so all things considered spying became the next big uses of icbms we started to put satellites earlier satellite used to have film rolls which they will throw and uh, there would be a plane to catch it mid air and then those roll will be developed and will have suffice to say was one ask very practical but spying was big enough endeavor to spend millions of dollar to build a rocket thousands of dollar to have a, a plane in the air ready to catch it and it was worth it for a time as electronics got better and scanning technology image sensors and all those things evolved we no longer we just now have a data link spying satellites is very big now not all satellites use optical other satellites use radar some uses uh, things that we don't even properly understand including radiation and uh, that was used so primarily to detect nuclear tests so spying was is very big in satellite industry as much as 10 to 35% of satellites have this as a primary function or as a secondary but they all do it now these are the two main functions of rockets as done by either countries or governments these are two now there are other two functions which is more civilian oriented now what are those two functions very simple one is research and development now what does that mean the research and development also comes with the aspect of communication now earlier we did not had understanding well enough of orbits we knew that we could have orbit and have signal bouncing back and forth but we did not understood how to have it high enough that as in now we uh, nowadays we call it geostationary orbit where you can have only few satellites and get coverage around the planet 24 into 7 everywhere you don't have to like aim a dish that is you know moving and compensating for the earth's rotation satellite would be static from your position so geostationary satellites ch- changed everything now communication became the most profitable aspect of space rockets primary use is just communication nowadays for private sector government still makes sure they they're doing spying and you know blowing things up but all things considered if you want to make money 
communication satellites where is where is the you know big money comes from and uh, satellites research and development project became so successful over time they even created constellations now constellation satellites have many many reasons to exist now the reason why we use constellation is that you can have a geostationary but it cannot give you precise enough because it will be very far it will be 30000 km minimum from the Earth's surface now you want to have satellite close if you want to observe weather patterns now okay you have close by but side effect your orbit is now much more quick so you can go around a place around roughly in half an hour you'll barely see one place of one piece of land for few minutes at best that's why uh, i would advise you guys to check out the live view footage from international space station it's very quick so now we launch many satellites and cover the earth to create a constellation this constellation can be used for many purposes one of the most popular purpose is gps global positioning system which basically is a military system which was well people just simply decided it's much more beneficial if large amount of people are using it so gps became a civilian thing. it's still a military project maintained by military but civilian uses now permitted to high enough accuracy where it is used for your pizza delivery so all the pizza lovers in the world you have us military to thank to now not to uh, not to mention there are other constellations also there are many weather constellation there are many uh, observation constellations but uh, navigation constellation became very day to day for you and i now there are other constellations also in the market like gps is not the one and one and only there is a russian constellation which is also known as glonass and european constellation is also under works chinese constellation is also under works even india is also developing its own satellite constellation services now thankfully nowadays you can buy mobile phone including mi mobile phones which use more than one constellation so their gps accuracy is quite high because at any time there would be at least some satellite from some constellation so so that's uh, what they do satellites third use is the research development and communications now the fourth and the final the most interesting use is transport transporting people now you are transporting something all the time it could be a warhead warhead in terms of it could be just dead mass if you're traveling fast enough just a hunk of steel will do the damage you don't need explosive if you are traveling slow you might want to put explosive so you know you get the more oomph out of it or you could be like hey let, i want to really make sure there is no city left you will pack a nuclear warhead you can pack a spy satellite you can pack a communication but the hardest aspect of rocketry is making a rocket human rated what does that mean well first it means safety it cannot just go boom so making sure that rocket does not blow up while you are launching it is very crucial while you are launching the rocket you have to make sure it is slow enough like rockets really benefit from going high acceleration like they want to have as much g force as possible it gives them more acceleration for the given amount of fuel like let's say you have 5 liters of fuel you will get lo a lot more distance and acceleration and acceleration sorry about that and acceleration if you are traveling at higher g speeds now problem is even with payload payload cannot uh, sustain thousands of g force uh, modern satellites are generally rated to 3 to 5 g's and some even rated as high as 25 g's but humans cannot sustain this g forces they will simply get well if they are lucky they will pass out if they are unlucky they will go blind or dead now the reason why they will go blind is that our eye has a retina retina is not very well enforced so it can snap that's why blind, uh, blindness also could happen and your heart is not designed to work at that pressure and if it did if it really pressed it it will blow burst all of your veins so it's not uh, very comfortable even though we try to make a rocket uh, as comfortable as possible we really can't do much about it because rockets have to be fast enough otherwise they will simply not leave the atmosphere so that's why you have like you know rocket launch is very high g force it is like it's comparable if not more hard than launching from a aircraft carrier which uses a steam catapult to throw the craft and uh, it's not as like it might look like it's the same as like you know uh, flying from a runway but no runway you are have a very comfortable acceleration you can handle it but on that sinker it can go as high as 2 to 3 g's and uh, pilots have to be trained so they don't lose their consciousness and like 
it's very difficult and painful and astronauts go through well twice to three times rougher than that and not to mention there is a giant explosion happening below them so these are the four core aspects of rocketry first destruction we blow each other up second we spy on each other third communication and research and development research and development could also include uh, figuring out weather patterns sea levels uh, co2 emissions in the atmosphere and all that thing fourth the most interesting one human transportation from surface to orbit or to other planets eventually hopefully so that covers the what it is used for now let's look into the most intriguing part how I have to be very honest here, rocket science, while it's not the most difficult science, is one of the most annoyingly misunderstood one. Now, I, won't, I cannot do justice or about this topic in one episode. I have to do multiple episodes covering each aspect of it. So I'm just going to give the most basic idea about it. It works on third law of motion. Basically, for every action, there is a reaction. You throw things down, you go up. Is as simple as that you throw things in this way you go this way as simple as that action and reaction that's why it's independent rocket is independent of everything if you have enough force going downwards you can go upwards against a gravitational well if you are doing the same thing in space it will still work it does not need an atmosphere heck almost atmosphere hinders its performance so third law is the crucial part now how many parts rocket do have well for simpler purpose two Payload, the money shot, basically which pays you, and uh, rocket. Rocket sometimes can be called launchers. You will have uh, on top of Falcon launcher and on top of Atlas as a launcher. So there are launchers and then there is payload. Payload is uh, what somebody will build up and they will contact a space agency or a company. Space agency, they could uh, contact like ISRO, NASA, things, JAXA and uh, payload will be built by either private individual or a country, things like that and then this uh, companies or species they will hire a launcher launcher could be anything atlas saturn other countries also have their own rockets and uh, it will be launched so these are the two core components of a rocket now for today let's call it a day in next episode we'll look into more details of how because how is a really really deep and complex subject i cannot do it justice in one episode basically so so that was my channel guys hope you liked the episode one of rocket monday if you like to see more about rocket i will see you on next monday and if you want to see more about uh, what i do is i will ask you to tune in next day and tomorrow would be tuesday where we'll be looking into cameras as i said the spying was a big aspect of rocket still is so look into cameras and if you want to support me and see more of me i would recommend click the ads please it it helps a lot so if you enjoyed it you want to share me uh, share more about this information please leave a like comment and if you want to make me look into a specific target or subject matter comment about it i'll uh, i'll read all the comments and as always thanks for watching